<clears throat> a little. Uh, maybe there will some be some um, uh, probability aspects, but I will also insist on the functional analysis aspects. So, what is the question? Is in measure compression um, is uh, something which is the midway uh, between clustering and compression. So, what is um, clustering? Clustering is you have a set of points and you want to to put them in, uh, in groups. And of course, maybe uh, points that belong to, to the same group will, uh, will be close to one to each other. So it's a notion of distance. And um, for instance, shear is an example when you decide to, to split this uh, whole. Uh, the, uh, sorry, we cannot see your slides. Ah. Is this so? Um, no, I, we can see. Can, we can see. I we, see. We, I see. Yes, we <coughs> can see. You can see, but not me. <laughs> ah. um, I don't is, know why. It, it was okay in the beginning, or? Yes, yes. It's. I have seen all the slides personally. I don't know what happens. <laughs> okay, maybe it's. Um, you have to uh, stop the video, and maybe you will get the. Um, shared screen in this case. Um, so I, I will continue, it's okay? Yeah. Okay. So um, here's the points are, for instance, uh, each color is a, you decide to put um, them in three groups. So each group has a different color. Another um, close idea is the, the one of measure compression. Compression, you can see it as an example on the, JPEG image compression, which you take an, a full object with many details and you want to compress in order to, to have less space on disk and so on. And you replace it by image, which is less good quality, but it's also um, smaller in size. So this is the idea of compression. Um, this has um, also uh, many situation in mathematical um, sciences where you encounter this, for instance, if you want to have an alternative to Monte Carlo, so you don't want to have a stochastic uh, approximation, but you want to have an alternative to, to Monte Carlo approximation when you deal with integrals over a very high dimensional space. So here in general, omega is an object which lives in a high dimensional space. And in order to approximate this integral, you, you may want to approximate the omega, which is a measure. It can be a uniform measure, it can be any other. And you want to approximate this measure as a sum of Dirac masses, for instance. And in this case, the integral would be approximated as, our, as one over k. If you take them uniformly, you don't have to, but you can. Um, one over k, sum of f of omega k. So in order to show you, uh, so of course, when the dimension, the omega k lives in R1, R2, R3, and so on, you can, uh, you call this quadrature and it's very well documented in numerical uh, literature, um, but it can be other objects, for instance, more exotic examples are when omega are um, the realization of a brown emotion. So this omega is a curve. Now it's a, an oscillatory path of the brown emotion and you want to approximate that. And the question how to approximate this measure on the set of all polarization of uh, uh, brown emotion. And I give you an, an example when, um, uh, so again, this is not a, this is a deterministic approach. You replace this, the realization by some scenarios. You, you, uh, you learn about this in economics and epidemics and so on. You choose some scenarios, some representative scenarios. And these are two representative scenarios of the Brownian motion, which are exact to all the right, don't remember, I guess, two and a half, so, something like this. So these are, you replace the sum over all scenario by the sum over this scenario and the other one. And another example is when you want to summarize the distribution, for instance, a Gaussian, a 2D Gaussian, this is the density of the 2D Gaussian, but you want to replace it only with, for instance, 17 points. And algorithm that I will present you uh, later will do that. Will replace this full distribution and replace for us integral over this distribution with the integral over the 17 points. And as you see, the algorithm is, some, is somehow clever because it managed to 
to see some structure here, and you see that um, there is um, some layers. Uh, there is a two points layer inside, and followed by uh, by a seven point layers here and an eight point layer here. All are almost um, regular, and uh, this was not required. I mean, this is just automatically done. We want to some automatic uh, procedure of this type. Other example is a high dimensional object, but with restrictions, so all images live in very high dimensional space. Here is uh, 28 by 8, 28, so 784 dimensions, but they are not, it's not full, this is not supported over all space. For instance, here we take um, a NIST database, which is a well known database in machine learning, which consists of 60,000 handwritten numbers, uh, in fact, figures between zero and nine. And they are written in many ways from zero, and you see there are many ways to write a nine and so on. And we want to summarize the 60,000 with, for instance, 10 images. How can we automatically choose? Uh, of course, by hand, you understand what happens, but uh, automatically, if, if you just are given 60,000 images of this type, how do you summarize this? And another uh, version is a fashion list database when you see shoes and uh, clothes and so on, and you want to summarize that. So for instance, these are 525 uh, random uh, samples, but uh, as I said, there are many of them. Okay, so what is the idea? Um, the idea is that uh, if you have a, a finite Borel measure new uh, in practice, Many, many times we will be a probability measure. Um, um, you want to select an approximation of this measure, which is a sum of one over k uh, Dirac masses in xk. So you want to find the xk, this is the important points that minimizes the distance from mu to this uh, compression with k points. So k is given usually. Um, this is not always the case, but usually k is given. And also, as I said, we can change. I will talk later about one over k if, if this uh, remains uniform or not. And um, the probability measure do not live in a Hilbert space, but good numerics happen in Hilbert space. So we want to find something which is close. So I will select, um, so you minimize the distance which is called a statistical distance, if this is probably low. And um, this can be, there are many statistical distances uh, available, but I will select um, those which are more close um, to a Hilbert space structure. So in fact, what you do, you obtain the distance as this formula, um, where uh, you have a kernel K of A, X and Y, which is a distance between delta X and delta Y squared. So this is the distance square, this is in k, x, and y. Um, and for instance, when k, x, and y is translation or rotation invariant, to obtain k as a function h of x minus y uh, modulus. Okay, these are x and y, I suppose they are Euclidean vectors, but there can be any points in the uh, metric space. Um, so this h is an important function to choose. And the question is how, which is better and an example that I will follow is H is the absolute value. So in fact, in this case, what you minimize with respect to X is this quantity. This is a constant that does not depend on X. And you minimize the, um, the distance from XK to XL plus one over K and with a constant plus some function of depending of XK, but not on XL, so separate, separate um, term. So this is a, more or less standard minimization problem. Of course, it depends uh, if the function is known, but this is what has to be minimized and this is done. This is what is done. As I said, um, in order to have a, a good numerical procedure, this has to be a distance. So it has to, be, have, to have the properties of the distance. So the question is, how can we find the distance? Um, so I need this small definition, uh, kernel K will be called conditional positive definite if for any 
P such that sum, sum of PI equals zero and any X1 XL in the space and a metric or the Euclidean space that uh, was selected um, was when where the object live, um, then this quadratic form is positive effect. Okay, so K X I X J um, creates a positive uh, form. Um, uh, attention in the literature, uh, there also the negative definite kernel definition, uh, which is not the same as the opposite of the positive definite uh, here, because the negative definite is, has this conditional uh, um, hypothesis, which uh, sum of pi equals zero. Um, so, is so the first question is: Is this, for instance, in order for our procedure to to be based on the minimization of this uh, form, is this absolute value given rise to a, a good distance? And the answer is yes. This kernel is conditionally positive definite. It has a long history. Um, it was investigated not exactly in this form, but similar uh, formula by the Eugenie in 1912. And then uh, it was named energy distance by Zekili. Uh, around 85 and then between 2002. It was uh, named maximum in discrepancy by Gretham. And uh, I um, somehow uh, arrived to it um, by a Radon Sobolev uh, procedure that I described just now. So of course, this is not the only one. Many other are possible. For instance, this H is a Gaussian function and so on. Um, it has some also some historical ideas on the Newton potential energy concept, but uh, so want to be on that. So what? How can we prove that this one is uh, giving rise to? Uh, how to prove that for any probability measure? This one, not necessarily in this form, but any other. Uh, this kind of quantity is always positive. In fact. Um, what uh, how I arrived to to that is that um, you can see that uh, this distance is the uh, random transform of the dual of the homogeneous Sobolev space H dot one. What does it mean? It means that you take the unit sphere in your R, R to the power whatever uh, dimension is, and you project. If you have the distance between two measure, you project this measure to to this line. So this is a line, theta is a line uh, integrated over all um, possible uh, lines on the unit sphere of directions. I mean, in the unit sphere, you project the two measures that you want to compute the distance of on this line and you obtain a one dimensional object. There are one dimensional measures. And uh, the, the good property of dimension one is that continuous function belong to, uh, continuous function belong to H dot one. Um, so it's, um, dual uh, will contain probability measure and measure of this type. So you can compute in H dot minus one, the distance between two 1D measures. And you sum up, up over, all, over all direction of the unit sphere. And of course, this is obviously positive because it's an integral of positive terms. So distance property, first distance property is uh, obtained. You also obtain, of course, the triangular properties easily. And um, you can prove it is non-degenerate because uh, these are the properties that are done transform. This, if the projection on any direction of probability of measures coincide for any direction, then the, the higher dimensional measures coincide. So um, we are OK. Then uh, let's. Um, go to more close to numerical. And um, of course, I will take this uh, distance from, between uh, um, delta x and delta y Dirac to be absolute value x minus y. But when I minimize the distance, distance square, so I will minimize the, the norm, not the norm square, because, because of this property. So in fact, uh, when minimization procedure used gradient and the gradient would not work very well around zero because I'm, of course the problem is only on zero, but uh, 
from numerical point of view is, an, uh, is an, in a neighborhood of zero, the, um, the computation will be unstable. So it's not a good, finally, it's not a good choice. So you have to replace it by something else. And uh, I looked at the, in the literature, there are some uh, ideas. Um, so my, uh, my idea is to replace modulus of x by uh, square root of a plus modulus of x squared. This, uh, sorry, is a mistake. Is uh, you have to read like this: a plus modulus of x squared to the power one half. But the question is: is this true that this for any value of a, this is a positive uh, conditional, a positive definite kernel? And the answer is yes. Uh, there are some ideas in Schoenberg in uh, thirty-eight. Um, the characterization of uh, positive uh, conditional positive definite kernel of completely monotonic function and uh, some um, um, first version is in Michelin 84 and um, some I added some of some kernels that I were needed in, uh, recently. Um, so it's okay. Um, in fact, you can extend the proof uh, to a larger family and you can show that it's a, a explicit um, Gaussian mixture formula uh, available for all of them uh, here. And this is what I basically done recently. Um, okay, so we can numerically replace, you can do the uh, computation and um, does it work? Um, what do we implement? So we implement minimize from x1, xk to that. Okay, so I remind you the formula this we minimize that here x k minus xl plus here um, in practice if we minimize this quantity we need g mu of xk which is uh, for instance um, which is that so there are two situations first we we know the target mu and we have an explicit formula for this uh, average this explicit formula exists for the for instance, Gaussian um, distribution and for some other. And in this case, the fu functions g, j here is explicitly known. So deterministic procedures are working very well. They are very fast and um, converge very well, and we can uh, use them. When this is not available as an analytic formula, you have to sample it. And in this case, we compute a noisy gradient using um, stochastic optimization, machine learning uh, algorithms like stochastic gradient descent, Adam algorithm, momentum algorithm, and so on, um, momentum descent, and so on. This also has to be the case when the database, um, the initial database is very large, you cannot compute, it's not efficient to compute the, the mean here to high precision. So um, in practice, when objects are many of them or dimension is large, we do stochastic optimization, otherwise deterministic. And what are the results? So if I try to summarize the 60,000 um, images like that one uh, with 10 points, uh, I obtain this. Um, there is also latent space discussion that I will not enter into that, but um, is this a good result? Well, it seems so because um, automatically the algorithm understood that um, there are 10 different figures, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so it was not asked to, first of all, the algorithm does not any label. It doesn't know that this is an 8. It figured, it figured out somehow that this is close to some other eights, but does not know it uh, because I erased the labels from the database come with a label, but the label were not used. So by itself, it understood first to which label correspond to each image and understood next that in order to summarize, it's better take one of each because in, they are uniformly represented, each is 6,000 uh, images of eights, 6,000 and zero and so. Um, for other test case, other test case, I took 16 Gaussian uh, on a grid. So these are uh, each one with the weight one over 16. So, uh, and I asked to represent this mixture of Gaussian with 
48 points. Algorithm understood right away that there are 16 of them and it put three points for each Gaussian. So the Gaussian was, or 2D Gaussian like this one, but except that there were 16 of them put on a, on a grid. Um, and understood how to place these points and you see that it's a nice uh, distribution. So it works rather well. But there are some questions. Um, first of all, well, as a mathematician, we can ask, well, does the solution exist? Of course, the solution here of what of this minimization and um, if the function, uh, the kernel is smooth enough and uh, with very few hypotheses, we can prove that this is by standard continuity and compactness that this has a solution. This is not the most difficult part. Um, what about if I don't take one over K, but I take something else? Because for instance, when clustering, suppose that I already know that there is a cluster which has many points more than the other one. Can I use this observation? Of course, I, it's, it's easy, just put PK and that's all. Um, question is, what about if I don't know the, uh, the distribution of clusters? Uh, in fact, this, if the XK are fixed now, the, uh, the optimization of PK is just optimization of a quadratic form and is analytic. So it works very well also when I, uh, there are tests that are not given here, but I tested also when the 16 Gaussian are, do not have uniform weights and to also recover the weights too. So it's okay, um, but, but from a theoretical point of view, we have some problems here because, um, well, I, for instance, I give you an example of why. Um, suppose I want to represent a Dirac mass in zero, but I don't have the choice. I have to represent them with the three points here. I can choose only one, but I, I'm allowed to use up to three, but only this one. Well, the optimum, um, the, the probability found, the, the measure that is most close to Dirac measure here is which is supported here in these three points has in fact, is not a positive measure. It's a measure which has positive weights here and negative weight here because it somehow it, well, it's, it works like that. And um, this is not very comfortable because it's, um, well, how can we represent a probability um, uh, law to compress it with negative uh, weights? Um, for numerical integration, this works, but for probability purposes, this is not so elegant. So um, the question is, is this true that suppose that mu is positive uh, distribution, is this true that when we optimize both PK and XK, okay, and this here, uh, recall that this we have a quasi, I mean, this has a simple formula, we can read that. Um, is it true that when you compress a positive um, measure, is it true that we can recover um, positive weights here? And well, um, I did not found much uh, results in the literature, but uh, there is always one, but only after you prove the <laughs> theorem. So I, I still have to prove it in order to find the literature. Um, similar result, but anyway, I was able to prove in some cases, but um, some, and to, to show that in fact, PK are really positive if the initial measure is uh, positive. Um, but again, there are counter examples that show that this in general, if you don't put any high, further hypothesis, it does not look like. Another important question, maybe I'll try to, to reach a closure. Um, and how does this compression depends on the target measure? So for instance, suppose the target is a normal variable and we just uh, slide it. And uh, I mean, we change the mean. We have u, for instance, from zero to one, go slowly from zero to one. So mu, u, it's a Gaussian um, distribution that uh, moves a little bit to the right and with variance constant. Okay, so we fix K, for instance, fix three, 
we want to represent a Gaussian uh, distribution with three points. Um, for any U, the compression it's okay, it works okay. But what about the, as, so I obtained for any U uh, three points, X1, X2, X3, and but how do they depend on U? Uh, is this dependence continuous? Because here is analytic, so I expect there is some smoothness. Um, well, um, this is a more difficult question than one can imagine. So in fact, we, I can prove in some situation in basically in 1D uh, um, that this works, which means the following. So suppose that I minimize, I take uniform, but it can be uh, something else. Um, I try to find, I have a measure depending on a parameter which is regular enough, uh, attention, this is regular enough in the space of uh, metric space of uh, measure. So, okay. Um, that's why I do not make precise everything. Um, so I minimize this distance from the three Dirac masses to a mu u. So for any mu, the solution exists. And in, I can even prove that uh, in, under the hypothesis, I think the solution is unique. It is not always unique. For instance, in, in 2D Gaussian, if there is a symmetry, the Gaussian is a rotation variant, of course, any rotation of the solution would be the same, um, would be also a solution. But suppose we eliminate this kind of rotation that um, first for any given U, the solution exists, okay? CU, which uh, C as compression, this is a measure now, and uh, is unique as a probability law, okay? Um, and moreover, this is regular with respect to U in some, at least in the cases where the hypothesis are verified. So I can uh, somehow extract um, XK depends uh, continuously with respect to U. Um, in general, this is much more difficult. First, uh, because the compression is not necessarily unique, not only the symmetries, but more uh, complicated reasons. And then, um, in fact, I, the, the question is a continuous selection question, of course. Um, I, I have a, here for any U a solution or compression. Can, can I make this compression to depend continuously on a parameter? And uh, again, since the compression is not necessarily unique, I have to use uh, selection theorems which are um, multivalued, but uh, there the convexity is an important hypothesis and is not verified here, and I am not able to say anything. In fact. Of course, on the other hand, I can penalize. Um, so each C of U K minimizes that. Okay, so again, it's maybe sound complicated, but uh, uh, it's just a, the norm of the modulus and it's a sum. It's a more or less simple, simple sum. Um, so I, I have the solution for any U and supposing the, um, this is a good uh, compression, I can penalize the, uh, some, some sobolev space, the, the C, the norm of C of U. And in this case, I can obtain something which is continuous. Um, it can be written in this form and the existence of, a, of an optimum of something which is regular enough and which is close, close enough to, to my measure that I want to compress, there exists some, some uh, this kind of uh, solution. But I'm not sure that this solution is optimal. I mean, I'm not sure that the CU, which is continuous, would, would, will, be optimal in the sense that the distance is the smallest possible. And um, in order to have that, I need the uniformity when epsilon goes to zero and is not clear at all in general. So this is an open question and I expect it to, um, that uh, advances can be done, but um, at this point I cannot tell you much more. Um, so there are, I put here the three oh, more or less open questions I, I discussed. So um, I discussed less on the topology. Um, well, uh, the, um, what's um, the, 
is a general question how to characterize uh, the topology for uh, kernels K. Uh, this is solved in some cases, but uh, information is still needed. Um, the question of continuous selection and the question of positive under more general conditions um, are still um, uh, need still some um, some details. Um, and here there are some differences. Okay, so thank you for your patience. <laughs>